Still manually entering data from PDFs into Airtable. What if AI could do it for you in seconds? I'll show you how. Check it out. Welcome back. I'm Zach from InterDev Solutions. We help businesses streamline their processes using custom no-code tools so you can focus on what matters most. To learn more, you can visit our website, interdevsolutions.com, or use the link in the description below. Today, I will show you how to use Relay.app to process PDFs using AI and extract the details and enter it into Airtable. In this video, I'm going to be using a purchase order as an example, and we're gonna extract the details that we need from there, including line items, and add that automatically into Airtable. I already have the Airtable base and interface set up as a simple example. I will quickly run through that and show you an overview of how that's set up. But the primary focus of this tutorial will be in Relay, and we will build out that entire workflow from scratch. If you do not yet have accounts for the two tools that I mentioned, Relay and Airtable, there's links in the description below to get started. We're going to jump right in. This is Relay. So the first thing we're going to do is go in and we're going to create a new workflow. I like to label my workflows, PDF processing into Airtable or something like that. And then we can actually jump into Airtable now. And I'm just going to quickly review the tables that I have set up. Again, this is a really simple setup that I'm just going to use to demonstrate the functionalities that Relay has to be able to extract the data. But this is roughly how you're going to have a table and base set. You're going to have your purchase order and then your purchase order line items as two separate tables. The purchase order is going to contain the actual purchase order or PDF that you want to extract. This could be true for invoices or any other type of PDF that you want to get information from. The setup is going to be quite similar. We have purchase orders and on the purchase order table, things that are going to be relevant is the customer. Now this could be a separate table as well, but I'm just going to use a long text field in this case, a date that you receive the order, the order number, uh, a subtotal. Now this is a roll up that looks at the line item totals. And I'll show you that in a moment. We have a link to the line items table. And if I double click into this, you can see that it allows linking to multiple records because we can have multiple line items on a purchase order. We have an attachment field for the order PDF. And then I have a couple of other things here. I've got a notes field. So this will allow a user or someone inputting the purchase order to add additional notes if it's important. Um, we have a reviewed status and an AI upload. And this is just an auto number field that's labeled as ID. Now into line items, this is linking to the purchase orders table, as you can see. And if I double click into it, you can see this one does not allow linking to multiple records because a line item is just going to be relevant to one purchase order. Now I've got description. This could also be item name. We have quantity, unit price. This is a formula that's simply multiplying the quantity by the unit price. And we have a delivery date. In this case, I have it set up so that each line item will have a different delivery date requested. Every company, every type of business is going to be a little bit different in how they operate. This is the actual base side. I've got some interfaces set up as well. So we'll start with an office interface for purchase orders. And I'm imagining something like the office manager or depending on how your business is set up, whoever's receiving the purchase orders will come in here from their email or however they received it and add a new purchase order into the system. And now they're just going to simply upload the PDF. There's a lot of different ways to get these PDFs into the system. It's all going to be dependent on how you receive your purchase orders or your PDFs that you want to process from customers or whoever they're coming from. If you use Gmail or Outlook and you receive them by email, you could set up a label or a folder. And once you've dropped it in there, Relay would trigger to automate and bring in the information. This way I have it set up so that you have the flexibility to add the PDF as you want. And you could also set up a form if you wanted. So if you wanted the customer to upload it to the system for you, you could simply just set up a form and allow your customer or whoever add the document to the form and then it would upload in the system and then from there process through relay and so on. the next step once this has been uploaded we have a review step this is more like an admin or uh, a manager who has more control over the data 
the review stage, what we have here is it is being grouped by reviewed and not reviewed. Whoever's responsible for this can easily see, oh, I have a new document to review. Cause so the thing is with AI is it does a really good job, but it's still good to have that human element included where they take a look to make sure that the AI process the document properly. And then I have it in this case of fulfillment. So once it's being reviewed, it will be displayed and show up in the fulfillment interface so that whoever packages or builds the orders, or again, depending on your business, they have to take one final step before it gets sent out. I'm going to jump into relay and this is where we're really going to focus our time because this side of things is going to vary from business to business. So you're going to have to figure out your own workflow, but in relay now, the trigger that I want to add in this case is when a new record is added and it contains a PDF and also it's been requested that it uploaded via AI. Maybe for whatever reason you want to manually upload this information. I'll show you here in a moment, but I have a button set up so that uh, we add this AI up indication and that will tell Relay that this is an order that we want to process using AI. Again, very first step, we need to get the PDF somehow, whether that's through an email label, a form submission, or in our case, we're just uploading it directly to Airtable using this upload button. We'll go add trigger. I'm going to search Airtable and we're going to use this new record added. When a new record's added, and I have to go in and select my table, it's in this PDF processing base and then purchase order table. And then here's where the optional filters come in. First thing, I want to make sure that a PDF exists. We want this field to not be empty for it to trigger. We also want in our case, and maybe you want all of your PDFs to be processed using this automation and that's fine, but we want this to be set to yes. And I also want to make sure that reviewed is no, if it hasn't been reviewed yet, then it can also be processed. Those are our conditions or filters. I'm going to go back into Airtable, go into interfaces, and I'm going to click this add order, and I'm just going to upload a PDF sample that I have. I'll click into it, upload the file, and I'll hit create. And we can see here that we have an unnamed order. This is just the ID that I had showed you on the purchase order. And if we click into it, we can see that I have a really simple purchase order that I have set up. That's got the three line items, customer date, and the purchase order number. From this step, I have this process PDF. And if I click that, we can see that it's turned the AI upload to yes. If I go into relay now and hit this refresh button, we should see a preview pop up here. If I click into it, we can see that this aligns with this record. The next step I want to do is bring in an AI step and we're actually going to use a custom prompt. I'll select this prompt, any model. And then I have a prompt that I've pre-written and tested. I'm just going to paste it in and I'll read it out. You have been provided a purchase order. And then in brackets, I have PDF. Your task is to extract the following information from the document, including a list of line items. And it's important to mention that we want a list of line items because there's going to be multiple. And then here we have, we want purchase order number. We want the date, we want the customer name. And then there's a little additional context here being, we want the name address or any other identifying details and then line items brackets. There can be multiple. We're reminding it that there could be a list here and each including a description. We want the quantity. We want the unit price and we want the delivery date. Now we need to provide the actual PDF to the AI model as well. So we'll click this attach document or attach data. We'll go to select specific fields and I'm going to provide the order PDF. And then this is where we get to select the model that we want to use. And ideally you want to ensure that you get a quality output, but you also want to pick the model that is the cheapest that also provides the quality output, or at least the output that you're looking for. And now I tested a few different models here. The one that I actually found that worked the best and for the best price was this Gemini 1.5 flash. 
This one's really cheap and it did a good job at least extracting uh, documents that had a few or multiple line items. So we've got Gemini 1.5 flash and now the output and the expected response. We actually want structured data and then we're going to click this and generate from prompt. It's going to provide the output for us based off of our clear instructions here. And it usually does a pretty good job as well. In this case, I actually don't want to break it all out. So I'm just going to delete the customer. I'm going to add an output. We're just going to go text. I'll type in customer and hit save. Now there's a few additional instructions that I want to provide this date format. I would like it to provide me the output in the ISO 8601. That's just your year, your month and your day. I'll hit save and then line items. We can see it's a list and it's going to get the quantity unit price description and delivery date for each line item. It's got the purchase order and then we just add it in the customer. I want to give the delivery date some additional information as well. And if I go back into the purchase order, we can see the delivery date is provided to us in a month dash day dash year type format some custom instructions and I'll paste in some that I've already created, but basically again, we're converting the provided date formatted as the month, day, year into the year, month, day type format so that it knows what to look for. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. If you have multiple customers submitting purchase orders to you, they may provide those types of details in different date formats. And that's where you're going to have to set up different paths or come up with a little bit different of a process but the whole idea will be the same. Next step, I want to update the purchase order. We'll update the record in Airtable, and that's just going to be this record. We're going to update the purchase order record, and the field is going to be the customer, the date, the order number, and that should be everything for the purchase order. We can pass in the details that we extracted from the AI output. We'll pass in the customer. We'll pass in the date and we'll pass in the purchase order number. Now we go down to the next step. This is going to be an iterator so that we can go through each line item in the list that we extracted. And again, we want to go into the AI output and get the line items. For each line item, we want to add a step, which is going to be a create a record or add record to a table, pick the line items, if I go back into the view data here, we want to pick the line items table. I'll select line items, and then we've got the fields to populate. I want to add in the purchase order. We'll bring in the description, quantity, unit price, and the delivery date. We can just pass in object one, the description. We'll want to go into the iterator here for each line item. We'll pass in the description. We'll pass in the quantity. We'll pass in the unit price. And finally, we will pass in the delivery date. I'll hit save and I can hit done. And now we have the workflow built out. Depending on your specific use case, you might want to send out a notification email to the person responsible for reviewing the upload. This should now look at that PDF, our purchase order PDF, and extract the details and update the system. If this workflow was already turned on, when I click this button within a few minutes, it should run this automation for us, but because we just built it, we want to give this a test run so we can go create test run and we will give it a shot here. As you can see here, it used 0.2 AI credits for the PDF and the prompt that we provided with it and the output. So that's really cheap and it tends to do a pretty good job. It's updated the purchase order and now we can see it's iterating over each line item. We can see it's added the details for us. It's got purchase order. It's got the date from here, February 11th. It's added in the customer. And we can see that the subtotal, which is a rollout field, brought in all of the subtotal values. So if I click into it, we can see the subtotal was 600. So that's correct. And it's added in the three line items. It looks like everything, including the description or item name, quantity, unit price, delivery date, or all correct. Now that we've reviewed it, I can go up here, click approve, and we can see it's moved into the review stage. And now it will display for us in the fulfillment phase. So again, it can now go to whoever's responsible 
for fulfilling this order. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more tutorials in the future.